<laughs> Here we are. We're live. Happy Hi, Friday, Tony. Everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> and look. And okay, what once again. Strange Friday it is. Yes. Where are I, you, Gina? I, I don't have wine and I don't even have a wine glass to pretend. Um, I'm in the hospital with our older daughter um, who's been here since Wednesday night and getting ready to have her first baby. So it's an exciting time, but we're kind of at the end of our rope of going, all right, enough of this nonsense. Let's get the baby out. But she's sleeping right now, so it was a perfect time to come out and and do the show. So excited. So he hey, everyone. Um, good to see everyone on a Friday, and hopefully you have more in your glass than just ice water. <laughs> well, it was funny. You just got back from a fabulous week. I did. I just got back from a fabulous art retreat. But but before I, I talk very quickly about that, yeah. um, hey, Lisa. <laughs> I I was going to say that that yesterday I was at the hairdresser and Sylvana, my hairdresser, was saying that she always watches these and she laughed and she said and she always has a glass of wine in her hand when she watches them. So I thought I thought that was great. Yeah, I just came yes. back from a, a week long art retreat. Um, it was actually probably 10 days from beginning to end. And I have to say, um, I turned everything off. Everything. Oh, you're so good. I um, didn't have a whole lot of options because we were kind of in the studio from seven in the morning till seven at night and seven days of classes. So that's a lot of sevens. But yeah. um, uh, but I, I had uh, it was so cool to be completely absorbed by learning a different skill and not even thinking about, although the, the first instructor, Seth Apter, who uh, you and I both know, and we did we did his course and I did a video on something he said every so often during the class, he'd look at me and he'd go, Bonnie, that's a good one for the blog. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So at least somebody was thinking because I wasn't. Exactly. Every day I was hoping, okay, Tony's going to pull some business nuggets out of this art retreat to share. Oh, yeah. Um, I got several, several. And several. I have to say, shout out to Bob and Lisa. And Lisa this is the one I was talking about this morning, saying she needs to come on our show and drink some wine with us on Wine Down. And Lisa, because I'm in the hospital, all I could find was um, a cup of ice water. <laughs> so hey, Bob. Oh, we've missed you. I've missed you. But yes, Lisa, I don't know who you're saying. That's not real wine. This, oh. this is wine. Lee, yeah, Tony. Tony's gonna I drink for the one. two of us. Yeah. Um, Chantel, shout out to Chantel. Hey, um, yeah, good to see so many of you on here on a Friday. And I was just saying, I'm, I'm here in the hospital waiting for my daughter to have a baby. And so, we're we we. This is the dedication we have, people. We will come on regardless of what's going on in our lives. And, and Except last says, Jared says that all guests on the show can have wine. Yes. Actually, we always assume all of you watching are drinking wine with us as we wind down, Yes, even though it's early for some of you and uh, later for some. But as Tony says, what, 10 o'clock is a good time to start drinking wine? In the yeah. morning is a good time. In the time. morning. So, okay. okay so time. And before that, it's Bailey's and coffee. So ba Bailey's and coffee and then transition to wine. That's but today we're going to talk about genius. Yes. Because, well, number one, you spent the week with an artistic genius, two, uh, two different uh, people that we would say are artistic geniuses. And then I'm here in the hospital waiting for another genius to be born. So genius to be born. we thought this was a great topic to talk about. And, um, and so I, I actually have a question. Oh, let's see what just happened. My whole, oh, there we go. Um, hey, Jim. Yay. Jim is here from, uh, I'm guessing from Mexico. See uh, where he is and, it's good yeah. to see you again. Jim's probably in a treetop somewhere watching. Or, I always picture Jim, you're somewhere in a treetop in either Chile or Ecuador or in Mexico, and you've got like antennas so that you can watch the show. Um, let me keep that vision, even if it's not yeah. true. Yeah. But I wanted to talk about, um, and my agenda is it disappeared. But um, one of the things I want you guys to write in the comments here, I want you guys to put in the chat. Who comes to mind besides Tony and I when I say the word genius? <laughs> Who yeah, comes to mind when we say the word genius? I'm curious um, because I think we we have a few people that pop up in our head when we think of that word genius. And oh, Jim is in Canada on the river. Wow, 
Jim, you're you're a genius for making that happen. Save me a spot, Jim. Save yeah. me a spot. Um, um, so yeah, I think I think the word genius invokes uh, this whole preconception, and that usually there's a name attached to it. I mean, right. obviously, we think of. Einstein and right. Picasso and and uh, modern day we think of Elon Musk. Right, Einstein. We yeah, we go of, to Einstein's. Uh, most of you are right. Yeah, thinking of Einstein um, comes to mind, and it's just interesting because this week I heard a couple different. Uh, the <laughs> word genius popped up several times. One, I was listening to the story of Barbara Corcoran. Cochran, Corcoran, the real estate mogul. Um, she's on Shark Tank and she is, you know, the queen of real estate, but they were calling her the genius. She was a real estate genius. And she was talking about how growing up, she went to a Catholic school and the nun in her elementary school called her stupid. And so she always had this label of stupid, but her mother, they had nine, she was one of nine children and her mother always gave each ch child a special, a special label. Like she was always imaginative. And her mother always told her she was so imaginative. And so when this teacher told her she was stupid, she was thinking to herself, well, I may not be good in school, but you know what? Because I'm imaginative, I'm sure I'll fill in the blanks and make, you know, make my way. And she said, talked about how when she started believing that she was imaginative, she was able to solve these problems that she was having with school or what have you. And it just made me think how many of us maybe it can go either way. Maybe we have that negative label that's preventing us from being more imaginative or more innovative. Um, and so we're, we're hanging on to that negative label when all we have to do is believe that we were more of a genius. And, and then Seth Godin's podcast, which I love his podcast, is called Akimbo. And this week his topic was genius. I saw that. He, yeah, and it was really interesting because he talked about um, – you know, we're all born with this ability to become a genius. But what his whole thing was, we we spend time where the market allows. So, for example, you know, in the last 15 years, social media, digital marketing has been the thing. And so everybody spends time and effort perfecting their skills in that area. And so, you know, if you get in early enough into an area where the market has demand, can you easily become genius in that area because you spend the time and effort there? Right. Um, and and so his whole thing is we all of us could have that potential if we believe it. And I thought that was a really interesting. Um, oh, the doorbell rang. Maybe Taylor's baby's here. Um, and so and I always hear that phrase, you know, hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. And oh, I didn't sometimes. Know Oh, I love that quote. You know, hustle beats talent. So we may not feel we have the talent, but if we hustle and we put in the effort, we could get that. You know, people could see that. Wow, you're a genius in this area, and we we see that happen a lot with people. Yeah, and so and so I think you're right. I think a lot of it has to do with um, a belief system and and how we perceive ourselves. Um, right. What's interesting for me is when I when I saw that 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 was the topic this week because I was out of town and so Gina chose the topic and I went oh okay I better do some thinking about, about genius and and so the first thing I did is I went and looked up the definition and here's the really interesting thing is that there's genius the noun and there's genius the adjective in other words I that was genius he did a genius thing, she did a genius, that was a genius idea. And right. I think for most of us, when it comes to belief systems, is it's hard perhaps to believe that we're a genius in the sense yep. of a no the noun genius. The noun genius, and right. For people like Einstein and, and Musk and, and all of these people. But I think that it's easier to believe that we have the capacity to do something genius because the definition of genius as a noun is its exceptional intellectual or creative power or some other natural ability. Right. That's a lot for, for, in fact, if any of us did believe that about ourselves and said that, we would be accused probably of being arrogant right. uh, and trying to associate ourselves with people with whom we, we don't naturally belong. But the definition of genius as an adjective, and this is where I got so excited, is very clever or ingenious. 
or innovative or imaginative. And so I think it's not so much about being a genius as it is about nurturing our that, inner genius. Yeah, we exactly. All have, we all have the ability to be imaginative, to be creative in our own way. But the question is, do we take care um, of that? I mean, I, I think it was George Land who did a study, and I'm probably going to mess up the number slightly, but they did a study that measured the level of imagination and creativity. And I think in, you know, I, I'm, I'm making stuff up here, but but it's more <laughs> or less right. Um, you know, five-year-olds, it was 90%. Right. Uh, Thirteen-year-olds, it was seventy percent, and adults, it was you know ten percent or something like that. But but the reality is, we don't. Our society doesn't encourage us to nurture our genius. That genius. Um, yeah. And so I think that's an easier belief system. Is I have I am not necessarily a genius, but I have genius inside of me. And how do I nurture that genius? What does that genius look like? Uh, I think there are like seven types of, of uh, intellect, seven, seven types of IQ. I remember learning that years ago. Interesting, um, yeah. And so what might be smart for someone, might be genius for someone, might not be genius for someone else. So how do we nurture that inner genius? Well, I think it's interesting, Jim's question, genius versus expert, is one better than the other? Um, to me, I think of an expert as someone who gets really good at something, but there's many of them. Genius is someone who capitalizes on that and gets out in front and others see them as the innovator in that area of expertise. Because if you think about who do we say is a genius, it's usually the one who has, I mean, take Elon Musk. There's probably many people out there who have the same intellectual capacity. Okay, maybe not a lot, but, uh, but there's, there are more than just one. And I think what sets him apart is he got out front and he took advantage of that ability to be in front and, and be seen and known as that leader in that space. And that, you know, being innovative, I think being different when you're different enough because there's many people who can be an expert, but when you're different and you have that expertise, people see that as genius. That, that was genius that he was able to do that. Yeah, that's I, my I take. Like a slightly different take on it. Um, it Sorry, I'm messing with my headset here. I, I think that when I think of a genius, it is people who are born with this exceptional capacity to do something. I'm actually I'm actually watching a, a TV series right now on Einstein. Right. Uh, and uh, his mind never stopped. It never stopped. He, you know, he looked at dinner and 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 came up with a theory of relativity. Again, I relativity again, I'm kind of making stuff up, but but he was constantly so I don't know, Jim, if you can strive to be a genius. I I, I don't I don't I don't, See, I don't I know if you can strive to be a genius. I think you can strive to be an expert, but I would say that and that's a good thing. Uh, you are an expert in what you do, um, and there may be an element of, of genius. I think that the trips that you organize are genius. Um, so I, I again, I go back to the this whole uh, idea that we want to be inserting our own personal genius in everything that we do because right. if we're nurturing our own personal genius, then we are different. So again, Jim, since you asked the question and I'm not, I'm not just trying to flatter you. I, I think there is a great deal of genius in what you do, the packages that you've put together, how you put your business together, what you've decided to do. Uh, unfortunately, please don't take this wrong. I'm not sure I put you in the same category as Einstein and, you know, Steve Jobs and Elon Musk. Um, and, 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 but and do you hear what's interesting? Each of those people you mentioned are in different industries. Is it that the leader or most innovative person in an industry is sometimes seen as? Yeah, I, think, I think that could be the first person, you know, the first person to come up with a new idea. But I think modern times, particularly, um, I think, I think we're very careful we say something is genius, and when we say someone is a genius, smart. Yeah, I don't smart. think we mean they're truly a genius. At least for me, when I say someone's a genius, I think IQ, Mensa level. Interesting, um, which, which is what I was going to ask you, is do yeah. you equate genius with IQ, well, or is genius being so innovative and so different 
I'm not because, sure you can separate the two because I think I think if you are that innovative, if you are the person that comes up with the big idea that that totally disrupts, um, right. like like Steve Jobs or like Musk or like Einstein uh, or you know any of those people, you must have a certain and I don't mean intellectual in the in necessarily the strict sense, I, right. but you've got a capacity to see things that um, other people don't see. But I love your take on it, Jim. Maybe it's the person that hustles the most, and maybe it's the person that gets out there the most. Um, and and I don't I don't know. And, and yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's definitely got me thinking of that whole concept of, um, you know, it, what how do you develop because Henry Ford was seen as genius and he was not book smart at all yes and you know and he he was okay with that because he was able to use his network and he was able to be creative and innovative and he was seen as genius now Bob says sometimes it's a team composite so the leaders who can surround themselves there's a Ford with genius create a phenomenon yeah that's it that's interesting because Apple is a great example of that um, but, I, but I I would say that I, I I just want to be clear when I talk about IQ. I don't mean you have to be book smart. Right. I, right. I, I really don't. But Ford was obviously a visionary, and and his type of intellect may not have been the type of intellect where you get a hundred on a test at school. But he obviously saw opportunities and saw made connections that other people didn't didn't. Well, make. how many of us how many of us see the opportunities but don't take them? Yeah, that's true too. And and Ford saw the opportunities and took them. Yeah, um, and capitalized on them, and so I, I feel like that inner, like you're saying, the inner genius um, is something that can be nurtured. I even look at as a child. If you see someone, you see these kids playing now sports, five years old, four years old. They're golfing. There, um, <laughs> Jim says, flattery is graciously received. <laughs> Um, you know, if a child at four or five is playing golf or playing football and we say, wow, they're so good at that sport. So we put them in special camps and we, we give them playtime we, the we call them a prodigy, but now the coach might give them more playtime because they were better than the kid who didn't. And all of a sudden you see this, um, development in that child who, kind of outshines the rest, but it was because they capitalized on the opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. And all of a sudden they're seen as this genius player, the Tiger Woods and, you know, whose dad had him out there at three. Does he have something that no one else has or did he get something nurtured? And yeah. then he believed it because he was told that. Uh, in, I mean, it's interesting. It really gets us thinking when yes. we say, oh, I'm not creative, I'm not innovative, or I need to be more innovative in my business. Is it that it is there? We haven't capitalized on the opportunities. Yeah, I, I think that's a big part of it, which, yeah. which, which I think for me and, and, and certainly for us in the work that we do, it's all about adding our own genius to the work that we're doing. Um, and and thinking about how we can nurture that genius, how we can capitalize on that genius. Uh, if if I, I know for me, just as 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 a result of this discussion that you and I have had today, I I that phrase of of inner genius for me has become very important. And yeah. and I think that if if you get up tomorrow and you're looking at something, you're looking at a new element for your business, um, and you look at it and you go. You know what is my what does my inner genius say about this? How can I right. add my inner genius to what's happening on social media or whatever? Because that inner genius, by its very nature, has to be different because it's unique to yeah. you. Right. It, exactly. And, and if you're not different. asking yourself that question, um, and if you're not nurturing it, and I, you know, the art retreat that I just went on is a great example of of nurturing. Um, our inner genius by doing something we're not used to doing. Of, of the two classes, the two three and a half day classes I took, the first one was right in my comfort zone with a teacher I knew and, and I had a great time and I learned tons, but I was very comfortable. The second class, didn't know the teacher, traditional book binding, like, like I'm talking way so far up, I don't even know how to thread a needle. <laughs> let alone use four needles to bind a handmade book. Right. But I can tell you that that the the intentional act of going outside of what has become a trite saying now, which is my comfort zone, but but going out of something that I'm comfortable doing. Yeah. That's the way we nurture, I think, one of the ways to nurture our inner genius, which is 
obliging ourselves to do something we're not used to doing, learning yeah. something we're not used to learning, learning something we're not used to learning, continuing to learn in our own area. I mean, I've been in the social, the social and digital marketing space since, gosh, you know, 2005. Yes. And I look at it and say, you know, I always say there's not a technology tool that I don't jump in and explore right away because it's in my space. I need to know that. I need to be the expert in that right. area. And to me, to quit learning, I mean, it bugs me when I hear people say they're an expert in something because I always feel like, gosh, in an industry where you're always learning and changing, we're all students. Um, however, if you keep learning, you're a student who continues to absorb that information and new tools. When I find out there's a new tool, I jump on and I play with it. I create an account and I, I figure it out. Um, and I feel like that is one of my superpowers is I'm not afraid to push buttons and download things and try it. And, and then I figure it out and I see, does this apply to business or not? And I think I take advantage of opportunities, you know, being a woman in a tech space um, is, it, it was an opportunity back then now it's everyone else's, you know, yes. like you always say, well, once everyone does it. But I think each of us can look at those opportunities and say, how can I, how can I apply that inner genius and act more like a genius and start believing that about what we do? You know, when you're good at what you do and you love what you do, is it that we're still not believing that what we do is so different and so good? I think that can hold us back as well. So how do you said something really interesting, which is acting like a genius? How do geniuses act? Yeah, which is kind of interesting. You know, when you look at those people that we threw out as um, people we consider a genius, how, how do they act? They act as a leader in their industry. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at any of them that we consider a, a, a genius, they're a leader in their industry. Right. They, um, <laughs> Jim, see, Jim, I love you more. Jim says, Gina, perhaps your expertise is genius. That is true. See, that's that inner thing. And I think a genius takes advantage of opportunities, but a, a genius also continues to innovate, change, um, evolve in their in their space. I mean, I, I doubt whether um, any of these people, Elon Musk, Newton, Einstein, you know, anybody that we're saying is a genius, I doubt whether any of them ever quit learning. Yeah. Um, so how does a, a genius behave? They're usually put out front because others see them as a genius. And they're put in positions where people see them as a genius. Well, then once you're out front, you behave differently because people see you as a genius. So you have to figure things out. There, there is no one that you, you know, you had, can pass the buck to, even though I think surrounding yourself with smarter people is always part of genius, you know? I always say that's my genius, is I just surround myself with smart people. Yeah. And yeah, that's interesting. What do you think? How do, what does a genius behave? Well, I, I you know, in, in, I think going back to your first point, geniuses believe they're genius. Um, you know, Einstein, it took a lot of years before he was recognized, Picasso, not really recognized till after he was dead. Right. Um, I, I think these people have a fundamental belief that they are different. differently yeah. and, and, and that they, they are to some extent, whether they use that word or not, they know that they're different and they know, and they believe. So that goes back to your uh, first point about it, to some extent it being a belief system, but then of course you have to have in a very broad sense of word, the word, the intellect to go along with it, whatever kind of intellect that is. Which again, the um, intellect comes from learning in your space. It doesn't have to be book learning. It doesn't have to be formal education. It's are you learning everything you can? Do you have an insatiable appetite? Are you curious to continue yes. learning about everything you can find in your space? Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I, I think there is something to be said for the natural born gift of a lot of these people, but um, it, it's nurtured. And I think that right. we, you know, you talk about the fact that you're always jumping on the, these new technologies. Well, you apply your inner genius to those technologies. Uh, on my end, I apply my inner genius to the articles I read, to the examples I read, to the, to the advice that I share, because I'm collecting all of this information about what's innovative and different, and I make connections with other people don't make that doesn't make me a genius but it is definitely my inner genius i know that i see things because jared keeps reminding me i see things uh, 
very differently than other people see it. That doesn't make me a genius, but that is my inner genius. And I or does it make you a genius, Tony? How many people say when it comes to innovation, Tony's a genius? Okay, you wouldn't Nobody. say that. Nobody says that. Nobody. How many right here listening? Yes, you we've said Jared. that. You and Jen. Yeah, but, but <laughs> okay, and, and you're, yeah, maybe it's just our moms. And, yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't have one, so I'm going to say you instead. Um, but, be that. But, but I think the point is, and, and I think this is a great intellectual discussion, but I also think the message in it for all of us is every day, we every moment, nurture. to look at what we're doing in our life or our business and say, how can I add a piece of me? How can I add a piece of my inner genius? When I look at that, what do I see? What do I think that other people may not think? And then I think the second part of it is you really do give your, you need to give you that inner genius time to think, to grow, to, to be provoked. You do it by trying all of these new uh, technologies. I do it by reading and examples or going on an art retreat, or we do it by going on an art retreat. And right. connections we never would have made um, if, if all we've been doing is what we, what we normally do. So right. how do you, how do you, if somebody listening to you, how do you nurture your inner genius? How do you... Or what do you think your inner genius is? I say that to people all the time about you, Tony, really. What yes. See, Jim, see, it's not just your mom who, just and playing the role of Tony. My mom and Jim. It's not just, it's not just me and Jer. It's me and Jer and Jim. So see, now you've got three votes. Um, but but, but all you said all do have that inner genius. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily take the time to explore what that inner genius is. But I firmly believe we all have it. Yeah, I we do. And and I do think the thing of um, something you said about going and learning outside of our industry, because we're talking about learning everything you can about your industry, but sometimes learning, but it's not just you're learning something else. Like if I go and take a class that's on something, which I've been thinking of, like what, what classes can I take that would be really different outside of my industry? But what we have to do is we have to look for those connecting fibers. What here... Can I apply here? Absolutely. That all of a sudden expands that network of learning um, and connects it back to our area of expertise, which might be what you were talking about earlier about layers. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that whatever genius we have starts out, we're born with it. So one might argue that Tiger Woods was born with a level of genius where golf is concerned that the rest of us don't necessarily have. And then, yes, it gets nurtured. <laughs> But I think part of nurturing our own inner genius is adding those layers. Every experience we have, everything that happens to us in our life, if we choose to think about it deeply and, and to really examine it or to see what insights we adds to our layer of genius. And I am always fascinated, and that's the most polite word I can think about, uh, think of right now about people who are never introspective. Have you, I mean, you've met people like that. We've all met yeah. people like that. They've lived their lives. They've lived a good life, but they have, they do not take the time to be introspective, to look at what's happened to them. Well, right. if you think about it, like a mixed media art piece, which is what you and I do, Gina, is all about the layers. And no matter what happens, at one point during the retreat, I called Seth over the instructor and I, I said, this is, it was like the 19th layer. I said, this is garbage. This sucks. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, you're right. But the only you good news is layers. it's yeah. just a layer. It's That's just right. a layer. And I think that our inner genius and, and, and look, you know, I'm I'm about to turn sixty. I've got I've got sixty years of, of layers fights of layers. Yeah. Sixty years of oh my god, I'm feeling heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just feeling very wise and layered. Oh, I'm feeling <laughs> yeah, but all the layers. But but no, the layers are light layers. Um, but but all joking aside. You know, how much time do we spend really looking back at those layers and, and thinking about what we learn? And then if we're not in a place we want to be, turn add another layer and add another layer, add another layer. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's genius right there. And Bob, thank you for this compliment. He says, I hope you two ladies realize how valuable these discussions are in drawing out the genius in us 
your audience each week. You get us thinking differently. And I think that is the, that's what happened this week when I heard all these different discussions that started kind of gelling together in this whole topic of genius and do we have that inside us and how do we nurture it and what can we do so that we're not labeling ourselves and our business and getting stuck too too often and kind of ties to the topic we talked about a couple weeks ago of you know do we when is it time to disrupt ourselves and right. i think sometimes you know disruption if applied in the right way where we we pivot but we bring those connecting fibers and say what did i what have i learned reflecting and taking that, that really can develop that inner genius. And and I, I think, and what I love in what you're just saying is, it really is, I think genius is the ability to make connections. Because if you think about it, if you think about Musk or Tiger Woods or any of those people, Einstein, you know, he's looking at something and he's making a connection and yeah. he's open to that connection. His brain, his inner genius is searching for that connection. So I, I've often talked about my morning routine of, of reading and it used to be I'd sit down with a paper Harvard Business Review and now I have a few digests that come in. To, you'll be very proud of me now. I read on my computer. Um, the, the dinosaurs have stopped roaming the earth. And, and, um, it is the reading of that of that diverse material right. that gives me I, yeah. I make connections and I go, oh, 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 oh. I like that. This makes me think that. It connects. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I didn't, no idea comes out of nothing. It yeah, comes right. because we make connections but in, in the information and the learning that we bring in and that ability to make connections creates another layer in our inner genius. Yeah, look inner at genius. how that all wrapped up. So it many. just was so perfect to look at 1230. That was genius. Yeah, and, and Jim Coffey, yes, that is true. Malcolm Gladwell claims it takes 10,000 hours to become an extra expert. Can you nurture genius? You just have it or you don't. I think we all have it, and the trick I is we all have what it. can every one of us do to nurture it and to find what it is, right? I, 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 I think we have I to find what our inner genius is. Right, because it could be that it's been stifled um, because I look and go, I wasn't – you know, raised in a way that I grew up thinking I'm so smart in this area or that area or but then all of a sudden I started nurturing my own inner genius of what do I have a passion for? Where did I get it? What gets me excited? What do I want to learn more about? And that inner genius can develop through that. So I think um, I think, yes, you need to put in the hours because that's the whole thing of, you know, consuming enough um, out there that helps us build those those connected yeah. fibers, and, and you and you can't be you you can't become an expert if expert if you're not using your genius, and that's the ten thousand right. that's, that's the ten thousand hours. hours. But there was a great there was a great speech I heard Dan Burris I think was an NSA member years and years ago that literally changed my life, changed Nabil Doss's life, changed our, our friend Bernard Landreville's life, and in in his speech he said we all have many talents but we only have one gift. And I remember that that was the beginning of the NSA conference and, and Nabil and Bear and I spent the next two and a half days not going to sessions. And just because we knew each other so well, right. spending the time finding out what, what other gift? people thought our gift was. Huh. And, and my gift, according to them, was this ability to be laser focused and make connections between ideas. Their gifts was something completely different. So I think... Right. Gift is what's your inner genius? We may have a lot of things that we can do. The question is, what are you here to do? What's your gift? What's your inner genius? And are you putting that to the best use in, in what you do and nurturing it each and every day? I say cheers to that. I say cheers to that. <laughs> it, it's been two weeks and I am so like, this is cool to be back and, and yes. see everybody and, and, uh, all of, of the people who are here and, and uh, woohoo, it's the weekend. Woo. And I'm glad that my daughter and her soon to be baby will, uh, they cooperated and she took a nap during this time so we oh. could do the show. Oh, I thought you meant she cooperated in the sense that she gave birth. <laughs> no, yeah. not yet. No, okay. Not yet. You'll, not you'll yet. let everybody know. I, I'll let everyone know. I'll post some pictures as soon as, um, as soon as it happens and she allows me. My other daughter has to pre approve all photos. So. Okay. Um, well, thank you everybody for coming today and thank you for all of the people. Gina and I were just talking about this. The people we run into, whether live or on social media, who tell us that they watch the replays of yeah. the of these shows. We love it. We appreciate and, and, it. Uh, 
if you're one of those people, we say thank you to you too. And don't forget, you can always leave a comment. Um, and, and you also, you can lurk and just come in and, and watch. And, <laughs> uh, Gina, your Facebook group is? Yes, you can join us on DIY Social. Or influencers social. or both. And, uh, and so thank you. Uh, it's, yes. it's great to thank be back. Um, um, we're, we're looking forward to the news of the baby grandma. Yes, we'll go see if there's any progress made. Bye, Grandma Gina. <laughs> grandma Gigi. That's right. Grandma Gigi. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone.